good evening. I hope we have a great night tonight. Tonight we're talking about Jesus. And I want to specifically talk about who he is in regards to the origin of everything, where everything started. But the first thing I want to ask you is, is simply this. What is your favorite vacation spot? You've gone on vacation or, or you've, you've gone to places. What is your favorite vacation spot and why is it your favorite? So take just a minute and, and chat and, and talk about that. And then we'll see you back here in just a minute. Well, I hope you had a good conversation. I tell you, I've been on a lot of vacations. I have a lot of favorite spots. But there's one that I want to share that um, is, now that I'm grown, it's not as much of a favorite spot, but Disney World. The first time I ever went to Disney World, the, the, our kids were small, and we, we went, and it was just so amazing, even as an adult, to walk through um, the park that we had never been to. At least I had never been to it. Uh, I think Patty had gone when she was when she was younger. But as I grew older and after, as I had already gone through the park three, four times, it, it became less amazing. But that first time was really, really neat. So I, I, I don't know what your uh, favorite places are, but... I just uh, would ask that you would uh, continue to think about those. Take time uh, together with your family. Take vacations. Take time together. Build those memories. Um, so, hey, I just want to jump into uh, the book of Colossians. And it's Colossians chapter 1. And uh, so your homework for this week is to read Colossians chapter 1. Today we're just going to focus on verses 16 through 20. Now I'll read it for you. For everything was created by him in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and by him all things hold together. He is also the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile everything to himself by making peace. Though the blood of his cross, whether the things on earth or things in heaven. So it starts right off. Paul writes that, that Jesus was there at the beginning. It says, by him and for him all things were created. Everything that was created was created both by Jesus and and for Jesus. So we ask a question uh, pretty commonly, was Jesus there in the Old Testament? Well, the answer is yes. And this is a, a passage that proves or, or explains how and why Jesus was there in the beginning. Remember Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That word God is Elohim, which is a plural of a singular God. Three persons, one God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God the Son is Jesus, and Jesus was there at the beginning. We also jump forward, we know in John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning, the Word was with God, the Word was God. And then we jump to verse 14, it says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Again, talking about Jesus. So Jesus was there at the beginning. In our passage today, in, in Colossians chapter 1, he says, He created everything. Everything was created by Him and for Him. So we kind of can understand the created by him part, right? Because because we understand that if he was there, if he was if he was if he's God and he's creating, of course, the the by is is understood. We understand uh, by him all things were created. But what about the for him? This passage is interesting. It says for him all things were created for him for his pleasure. They were created for his work. They were created for his desires. Everything was created by him and for him. And as I think about that, and I start to draw deeper in, into thought about this idea, God created us. God sent his son to die for us. Jesus walked on the earth to experience what we experienced. And yet, in the end, he went to the cross. 
He died for us. This, this week's sermon, we talked about how he, he lowered himself to our level. He became like us so that he could take on the punishment that we were the ones who earned that punishment. So it's an interesting thought for him. So everything that was created for him, he knew he would have to come and lay his life down to redeem everything. See, Jesus is about redemption. He's about redeeming us back to the Father. Jesus died to redeem us back to the Father. And it's something that we need to think about and we need to really honestly come to grips with and understand exactly what that means. That means we have rights to be called sons of God because he's redeemed us. We, we are called friends of God because he's redeemed us. See, we can't redeem ourselves. And in the midst of that, the one who created all things also had all things created for him, came to die for all things. It's an interesting concept, an interesting thought. So I want you to ask you a question. If Jesus came to die for you, what is it that keeps you from fully following Christ? I mean, I don't mean praying a prayer and, and saying, going to church on Sunday and all this, but you know, there's a, there's something that we miss where we do not fully follow Christ. We don't give our lives totally to Christ. What is it that's keeping us back? What is it that draws us away? I want you to talk about that. And then I want you to talk about how can you overcome those things? You know, you're, you're sitting in a group that, that hopefully is starting to grow together and starting to come together and, and become closer and I, I, I think um, is trying to um, do life together. And I think the big thing that we want to understand is, how can we do this together? So the question is, what is keeping you from following Christ fully? Not just going to church on Sunday, not just saying a prayer, but to fully live in Christ. And the second question is, how can we walk alongside one another so that we can all have that relationship with Christ. Just a couple thoughts. Maybe you have other questions that you'd like to ask. Feel free to ask them. Maybe you don't know who Jesus is. Well, then ask that question. That's what this is all about. These small groups are all about, these home gatherings are all about uh, introducing Christ in a way that's fresh and new. So take a moment and just go through that. And ask those questions. Remember, read Colossians chapter 1. If you got any questions, bring them back next week and we'll go over them. Okay? Have a great day. Mm -hmm.